Today we're continuing our review of the three least liked American multi-role fighters. Uh, today we are on tier seven, the P-47N, the Thunderbolt. Absolutely wonderful plane in real life. Uh, absolutely not loved at all in World of Warplanes. Let's take a look. All right, so we've got our P-47N here. We're in a tier seven battle, which is nice. We were just up against this BF-109Z. Um, we did not have the support of a, B, of a P-38, but we had a pretty nice vampire on our team, so no complaints. What do we need to do here? Well, so keep in mind, Pilots, this plane more than, than any other plane at tier seven, especially, is going to be utilized for air to ground capabilities. If you're not utilizing it for air to ground capabilities, then you're severely hampering your abilities to impact the game. If you want a plane that has um, a bunch of machine guns on it, but you want to be dogfighting, well then take out uh, take out something more akin to the P-51D, right? Um, let's go ahead and drop some rockets there and some bombs. I'm gonna blow myself up. Almost. Flipping G's. Um. So yeah, let's go ahead and move along. Unfortunately, or for better or for worse, this particular plane isn't built for air to ground capabilities as of yet. Uh, my pilot is built for speed and nothing more. I have a five point pilot. We'll take a look at him back in the um, hangar once we're done here but where my p-47b pilot was um, basically a ground attack pilot in everything but name um, my p-47n pilot is uh, wants to be a freaking race pilot so he's built just for speed not for ground destruction so it's gonna hamper our abilities a little bit to um, have a positive impact on ground targets over here. So let's go ahead and use some of our boosts. We've got a uh, fighter behind us, unfortunately. I was not paying attention. I just saw this heavy fighter that I knew I'd be able to kill. And I went straight for him. Luckily, I didn't take too much damage from that P-40. Let's see, which one am I going to go for here? Perfect. All right, and since we took out the sector with air defense aircraft, we can actually try to take this guy down as a defense kill. So let's do that. This IL-8 is like the wiggliest IL-8 I've ever seen. Set him on fire, which is incredibly important. Haven't hit my air brakes here. Don't take a chance. Ah, die, buddy. There we go. Let's head on to the center, I suppose. Let's head on over there. We need to get our boost on, so let's get some extra engine cooling going on. Looks like we're going to get the center. What we want to do in this situation is get our altitude up. At least a little bit. And hopefully we can get in the center. Dang it, their Yak-1M just killed somebody in the center. Alright, but we've got bombs. Boop. So let's try to put them to good use. Up and over. Man, pneumatic control assist would be so helpful. This plane really does not like to be a defense aircraft. Just doesn't fit the role very well. You kind of want the planes to just kind of get in front of you so you can kill them. Let's go ahead and. Ooh, there's a Yak 1M. Don't mind if I do. Let's go ahead and see if we can't get everybody to attack that. Closer. 
Goodbye, sir. Oh. Gonna get uh, accidentally killed by our uh, our friendly there, huh? Oh, I got another sector right as it was starting to uh, heal me up. So, it'd be what it be. Let's go ahead and drop a bomb right here. Might actually be a little bit too... Uh, too late past that. Let's uh, drop some rockets. Ooh, what are you? Set them on fire, which helps get the kill there. Let's reload our rockets and be done with it. Are we going to get air supremacy here? I think we might. Get our boost on, get our altitude up, get our... Yeah, let's just uh, keep on keeping on here, right? I actually don't mind. I'm hoping that they capture that uh, that garrison over there. We all know garrisons win games, but if they could capture one, that would make uh, make my life a little bit happier. So that way we can continue to get some more personal points. We're doing pretty well, all things considered. If I was in a more tourney plane, I'd actually just go defend, um, go defend a sector rather than attacking a sector, because you can get just as many capture points and personal points from defending as attacking. But this plane just really isn't all that good at defending a sector. It can be, in a pinch, but it's not comfortable, right? And you can, this is like flying a, a tank, honestly. Go, oh, is these ground targets? Come on, we can get these ground targets here. There we go. Keep on keeping on here. Uh, excellent. They've got two sectors, actually. So what we'll do is... So their Yak-1M must be doing some heavy lifting in the center there. Let's get some altitude here. I-210 is probably dead. And again, our P-38 could be dead, so who knows. Hit him with my tank. Unfortunately, I'm up higher than I want to be. I'd like to think that this guy is engaged with our P-38, but he's not. So I'm getting myself into a fight. Went to, came over here to try to help the P-38, and then the P-38 got away like a smart duck. Um, let's go ahead and just get out of dodge. Unable to do it, unfortunately. Uh, you get what you get. Sometimes it's what you get for helping people. Or trying to. Should should have left him alone, but luckily we died before Squall Line, so what we can do here in this situation is respawn. We'll have our bombs and rockets ready to go. And, uh, you know, this this game could turn around very easily. We are losing a lot of friendlies. So I'm actually going to go over to the garrison over here um, and utilize that to help us get our fifth sector captured. And maybe we'll get a defense kill. We'll see. If we can get an, another sector defended or like three more defense kills, we'll get a Hero of the Sky badge. The RP-38J is not looking all that good, to be honest, uh, health-wise. And again, there's a lot of people over here that I don't necessarily want to deal with. Let's actually go over to the center. I'm trying to avoid the fighters more than anything else. The, um, like that guy right there. It'd be very cool if somebody else could kill him. Alright, so can we? Dare we? Um, does something over here need just a little something something? I-210, I'll get you, buddy. Got him. Excellent. Up and over. Plane doesn't really like the up and over maneuvers, but this was the best best chance of me getting this mosquito. If I can kill him, I might get the hero of the sky now. I think I did. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Definitely not going head on versus something with 30 millimeter cannons. Oh, dang it. Close. 
close, but no cigar. Uh, that was a pretty good battle. Did a little bit of everything like you tend to want to do when you're in your your multi rolls that have the ability to do ground damage. Kind of a shame. I really thought I was going to be able to get a hero this guy. Oh well. Um, but this still shows the capabilities of this plane. And let's go ahead and take a look at it in the hangar. All right, so we were able to get 14 kills there. Decent amount of ground damage, 22,000. Not, uh, you know, next level anything like that. But your multi-rolls typically aren't going to be pulling 50,000 ground damage, right? Um, so 23,000 ground damage is not a bad thing, in my opinion, at all. You've got that flexibility. And that's what I do like about this plane. Uh, like I said in the, the P-47B gameplay, this is not my go-to Tier 7 multi-roll. Hell, I don't even know what it would be. Uh, but this this is not on my radar typically. But what this plane can do is a little bit of everything. And um, let's give us a GG this guy because he deserves it. And so, you know, sometimes you just want to be able to do a little bit of everything. And the thing that, that you're going to do to succeed in a P-47s is focusing on doing a little bit of everything. If you're putting yourself in a hole by doing nothing but defending or nothing but attacking, then you're missing out on the full capabilities of the plane. You don't want to be doing that because that's not what the plane's built for. If you want to be strictly defending, you want to go into a light fighter. If you want to be strictly attacking, I think go into a, a, a straight up ground attack plane. Go into a um, you know, an IL-10 or a, an ME-265 at tier 7. If you want to be killing all those heavy planes and doing nothing but that, well then go into another heavy fighter. The thing that makes the P-47 different is its flexibility to do a little bit of everything. A lot of people will compare the P-47s to the FW-190s uh, for a couple reasons. One, they're, they're the two fastest multi-roll lines in the game. They're also the two highest altitude multi-roll lines in the game. And they tend to, nobody really likes either of them. <laughs> There's some huge differences between the two planes. Yeah, they're both fast and high altitude for multi rolls. The FW 190, though, you can take pot shots at planes. You can go head on versus planes a lot more because you've got those big cannons on that plane that you don't have on the P 47s. And the P 47s do significantly more ground damage. It tends to be forgotten about. Uh, Again, if you're not focusing on taking advantage of your air-to-ground capabilities, then you're wasting the P-47N. And you might as well just be in a P-51D, which a lot of people don't like anyway. So, you know, focus on using the ground um, attack ability in World of Warplanes. Let's take a quick look at the complete upgrade of this plane. So, unlike on the P-47B, you've actually got some upgraded rockets here. You've got your... your HVAR rockets. You have two more rockets, but because they're HVARs, they actually do significantly more damage. Your two more rockets on this plane actually allow you to do twice the amount of damage that you were doing at tier 6. Tier 6, you were doing 4,500. Um, at tier 7 here, you're doing 10,000 damage with your rockets. And so that's, that's a big deal, right? So let's make sure that we're taking advantage of those rockets. They do reload. They take longer to reload, but it's not something that's completely, you know, they're, they're not useless. They're still very impactful, no pun intended. You have the same bombs that you had at tier six. These are two 500-pound bombs. They still, they do great, right? You, uh, there's no arguments about how well um, and how impactful the 500-pound bombs can be. So, again, you want to take advantage of those be making sure that you're you're dropping these down total you're able to do uh what 18,000 and some change ground damage if all your rockets and bombs hit obviously mine don't but you've got that flexibility to just throw enough crap at the wall and some of it's going to stick your guns even are upgraded you have eight 50 cal machine guns they don't do a bunch of damage but they do more damage than a tier six and they've got slightly better range than a tier six and so combined you're 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 still doing just enough to get by. You can't do head-ons, right? Other than if you happen to rocket them or something like that. But going head-on versus heavy planes, you can see when I was going about against that BF-109Z, nope, nope, nope. You will not win a head-on because your guns are not built for that. Your guns are built for setting fires and doing, you know, doing incremental bits of damage uh, to the point that you, know, you actually kill them. 
Very often I will try to take advantage of planes that are engaged with other planes, especially ground attackers and bombers. So if you're attacking somebody that's attacking a ground attack plane or attacking a bomber, they're taking incremental bits of damage anyway. And so they're not going to notice that you get behind them and start shooting them with your 50 cal machine guns very often until it's too late. They're like, wait a minute, I'm losing damage. I'm, you know, I'm losing my hit points quicker than I normally would be. It's not like when something with a big chunky cannon gets behind you and you lose so much damage instantly, you know there's a plane behind you. The, with the P-47s, you can get behind somebody and they don't necessarily realize they're they're in trouble until it's too late sometimes. And then you've got an upgraded engine as well, an upgraded and an airframe. All in all, what does that mean? It means incrementally every single statistic point of the P-47N is better than the P-47B. That doesn't always happen when you're going down a tech line. Sometimes, you know, sometimes the guns are the same from tier to tier. So that gun armament number will stay the same. Sometimes the bombs change or the rockets change or they stay the same. So sometimes you don't get a, a jump up in uh, a specific metric because some other metrics are jumping up. This particular line from the P-47B to the P-47N, literally everything jumps up a fraction of a bit. And so you've got that flexibility. Nothing is jumping up drastically, but everything's a little bit better with the P-47N. Of course, you're up tiered, but uh, you know, take advantage of that kind of situation. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at our service setup and then we'll take a look at our pilot. So I've got the exact same setup that I would have had uh, or did have with the P-47B. The only difference is my upgraded engine, I actually had a, an advanced one lying around, so I threw it in this. It means that the bonus characteristics, the, the uh, engine cooldown rate and the acceleration, the 1% acceleration without boost, doesn't count towards this plane until I get it specialized. But I still get a, a, a boost to the acceleration without boost of 5%. And the overall cruise speed is impacted by 2.8%. Uh, the resistance to fire is impacted, so I've again I don't catch on fire very often in this plane, but you do need to be mindful of that if you go down the upgraded engine um, path. As far as the gun equipment is concerned, or excuse me, the cockpit equipment, um, it doesn't really to me. Even though your your focus isn't necessarily on your gun power with this plane, the the improved or just any collimator sight um, is going to be better than your other option at this tier, which is the cockpit armor. It's, I don't really have an issue with the, the cruise resistance to injuries. Um, and I don't want to impact the maneuverability any more than it already is. As far as the consumables are concerned, again, same exact thing. So we're going to have our first aid package. I want to get my pilot in there as quickly as possible. And again, I don't catch on fire very often, so I'm not going to waste a slot on a fire extinguisher here. And I've got the engine cooling going on. So as um, as before, I try to keep my engine cooling. I try to always keep 10 seconds worth of boost lying around. So if I need to either get away from a slow plane or if I want to try to catch up to a fast plane or, or go to high altitude to get a bomber um, or try to get to a sector as quickly as possible, I've always got that flexibility. You've got 20 seconds worth of boost again. And so you want to try to take advantage of that extra boost that you get with the P-47. It's one of the perks of this line take advantage of that perk right um, and then universal ammo because again I've got I've got the credits to toss on it so I do that as far as my pilot is concerned this pilot's a lot different than my other pilot and that's because uh, this isn't Mary this is Spencer um, I went all in for the engine guru I'm not quite sure this is... I, I think I just had a five-point pilot lying around, and I said, let me just get Engine Guru 2 and be a happy camper. My next um, item to go for is definitely going to be the Demolition Expert. I want to make sure that my bombs and rockets are doing the extra damage that they can. 10% is incredibly helpful. So once I get to my seventh point, I will definitely be putting uh, Demolition Expert on here. And I'll be doing the same exact setup with my equipment after they get specialized as well that I had in the P-47B. Probably going all in when it comes to speed and definitely on the consumables, putting the improved fragmentation to help the bombs and rockets do 10% more damage on top of the 10% more damage. So again, the P-47N, very similar to the P-47B. 
biggest differences in you know, a tier eight you're going to be running into and i guess there are a couple tier six um, excuse me tier seven jets at tier eight you're going to be running into a lot of jets you're going to be running into a lot of speed so the tier seven can certainly struggle just from the fact that you're going to get you're just going to run into planes that are just better than you and you've got to come to the to the grips with that um your best bet is to be focused on the map, focused on where the enemies are, focused on where they're coming from, focused on where they're going, focused on what sectors are being flipped. You need to be a ground attack mentality, just like the P-47B. I feel like, you know, you could probably watch the P-47B video and get a very similar vibe to the P-47N. It's just the way the planes are played. If you're getting yourself stuck into trouble, you're gonna not enjoy this plane. If you're, if you're the focus of the enemy, you're not going to enjoy this plane. You're not going to enjoy this line up until the tier 9 and 10. You don't want to be focused of attention. The one time I died was going against an I-210 that I probably shouldn't have gone against. Sometimes sometimes just let your friendlies die if it means you can stay alive longer. Um, I thought the P-38 was going to stay there a little while longer, but no, he dipped out, which was the right move for him. Um, it's not like I told him I was coming to help, so he, he might not have known. And so... You've got to prioritize keeping yourself alive. If you can prioritize keeping yourself alive in the P-47s, you will enjoy your games better and you will have a better impact with your battles. So I hope this was helpful. Um, if anybody has any additional comments, any additional helpful hints, please put them in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. I know the community would love to hear it. I know the P-47B, P-47N, and the next plane, the XP-72, are not the most popular planes and are definitely not the most enjoyed planes in the game. Um, so I, again, I'd love to hear any additional helpful hints. Thank you so much for joining me and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good day.